Hello, my name is Dr. Philip McCarthy. I'm director of the Transplant and Cellular Therapy Program at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in Buffalo, New York. An autologous stem cell transplant is using your own stem cells. And it's really not a transplant because you're rescuing the patient from the toxic effects of the chemotherapy. Because if we gave the chemotherapy and we didn't do a stem cell rescue, the patient would run the risk of long-term damage to the marrow and poor or no recovery of their stem cell. And they would have no platelets, no white cells, no red cells, or very low levels. So what happens is we collect the patient's own stem cells uh, from the blood, occasionally from the bone marrow, and they, they're put in a freezer and then the patient receives the high-dose therapy and then the stem cells are infused back into the patient uh, just like a blood transfusion. And the stem cells are kind of like homing pigeons. They know where to go and they go back into the marrow cavity, repopulate, and you have count recovery. So the patient's platelets, white cells, and red cells all come back. And so it, it shortens the period of time when the blood counts are very low and it allows us to escalate the therapy to hopefully kill off the cancer cells. An allogeneic transplant involves finding a donor for a patient with a disease that needs to be treated with replacement of their diseased uh, marrow. So for an allogeneic transplant, we will uh, look for a suitable donor. If we're trying to get a fully matched one, we'll first look to brothers and sisters uh, because they uh, have about a 25% chance with each brother or sister of matching. Uh, there's a 50% chance they'll only be half matched and a 25% chance they won't have anything in common at all. If we find a suitable matched sibling, we often will pursue that. If we don't, we may go for an unrelated donor transplant where we go to a registry, it's called Be The Match, and they have a bank of people who have signed up out of the goodness of their hearts to potentially donate stem cells for an unrelated donor. The major problem with an allogeneic transplant is something called graft-versus-host disease, where the donor cells attack normal tissues in the recipient. And if it's severe enough, the patient can die from this. So we have a bunch of strategies to prevent this from happening. Interesting, however, is that graft-versus-host disease is accompanied by a graft-versus-tumor effect. And it's particularly effective in leukemias. And so what happens is the donor cells they don't attack the normal tissues too much and we keep that under control, they will attack the leukemia and help eradicate it. So it's very interesting in that our relapse rates are much lower uh, with an allogeneic transplant than say compared to an auto. But the three things that keep us up at night with an allogeneic transplant are graphosis, host disease, uh, infections, and the, the last thing I worry about is relapse of underlying disease. So even with an allogeneic transplant, we still have patients who relapse. So we're continually trying to design new strategies to help eradicate disease, control graft-versus host disease, and prevent serious infections to have better outcomes for our allo patients.